Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a plate. Most plates um, are about four to five and a half pounds for a dinner plate. That's something that's about 11 and a half inches, 12 inches wide. Um, what we have here is about two and a half pounds, and this would make a nice little salad plate, a uh, small dessert plate, or just sort of an everyday sandwich plate. And so um, to start with, a plate should be thrown on a bat. That eliminates some of the transfer problems of trying to move something that's really wide off of the wheel head. Um, the other thing is it gives you a nice surface to dry on and kind of helps with the uniformity of it. So to start with, we've got the two and a half pounder here. It's rounded and I'm just going to rock it, plop it on there. I'm going to use the coning technique to center it and then I'm going to use this technique where I kind of karate chop it down at an angle to compress it and move it out. Get the wheel going as fast as we can, kicking it. Just a little bit more into the middle. Top pressure, squeezing down, side pressure to seal it on. And now coning up. My hands aren't straight across, they're going to be off one way or the other. What I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of pressure across the top and I'm using this part of my palm to sort of cup and either push or pull to lift this clay up. It's going up and we're going to go back down and it's the down that's really important. And this is where we feel it come into center. And as we feel it get smooth in our fingers, we're going to slowly let off. The shape we're after is just like any other centered shape, where it's perpendicular on the sides. That means it comes up at a right angle and it's slightly domed across the top. We don't want a depression in there, and we don't want it undercut. Nice and even tells us that we've got a nice true surface and we've got a good compression surface to work with on the top. All right, left hand, clay is going to drive into it. Got my body to kind of create some leverage, provide some resistance, and then my right hand is up on top. I'm going to use the bone right here in my palm, right at my knuckle joint, and I'm going to work that back and forth to compress it. My ideal plate is going to have camber. It's going to have a little bit of an arc across the bottom, the lowest point being the middle. That allows us, when we go to trim it, it's got something to compress against. Also, when we have camber built into it, it helps with drying and heating up and expanding eventually when it goes through the kiln and also everyday use in the dishwasher or microwave that has a place to flex. So we want to build that into it at this stage and it starts with the centering. So here we go, side pressure, top pressure, and my left hand is controlling that leading edge. The right hand, a little slip, is compressing it down into that leading edge. I just work back and forth. Not a lot of strength needed. We let the wheel momentum kind of help throw it out with centripetal force as we push down. We just want to regulate where it goes. So it looks like an almost flat disc, but the lowest point is in the very middle. And you notice I'm not going past the middle point with that bone. And when I work it out, I also work back in, it's what we call compression move. And this back compression can be done with my palm like this, or it can be done with a rib, or it can be done with my fingers to move it back in. I like to just keep it all in one. So, I'll take a little peek at the thicknesses here. The middle is that thick, the side edge is that thick. So we're talking just a small amount difference between the two, but just enough that there's curvature in it. If for some reason you can't get that, I'll demonstrate those two. You can take the rib and move that out, or you can take your fingers and move that out, and then you would come back and you move it back in. And in this technique, I can take it and cut a little bit of the clay off with some slip, just using this edge of my finger. Okay, 
So we've got our plate base, we've got our plate base established. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create the rim. I'm going to show you a compression technique where we can use a sponge in our right hand, peace sign with the thumb holding the, the sponge against your finger. So peace sign in the back, thumb against the front, we've got the, sp the sponge that way. It's going to wrap around the rim just like it wraps around my finger here. With the left hand I'm going to undercut and pinch that clay up and put that right hand right over it and kind of pinch and pull. So here's my top compression and side compression as I pinch with my left hand that keeps it centered. I'll undercut this and I can either take it from this form, this is where you can continue for a pie pan as well as like a dog bowl or flat casserole. I'm going to use this to create a plate that has a stepped up ramp on it. I could have it just go out and lift up or I can have it go up and step up and step out. So what I'm going to do here is establish how deep it's going to be. Put a little slip inside and out, clean the outside, get that nice and smooth off before I hide it away, put a beveled edge, and now pick, pick the depth that it's going to be. And I want to go not too deep, maybe a quarter inch, and then start coming out. So I folded it over, and then I compress outward. I'll take my rib on the inside, in the middle, out, picking up all that slip, and then I'm going to use my fingers on the outside and the rib on the inside to compress my rim, we'll finish it off either with a chamois, if we don't want to use a sponge that takes the grains out of it, we want it nice and random, use my fingertips or I can use the webbing of my fingers to kind of compress that. Soften the edges here. I'm just going to finish with a little spiral in the middle. You don't have to do that. I like the look of it and how it kind of holds the glaze. We've already beveled the bottom edge. I like to do it before so it's not going to get in the way of the rim when I try to do it. At this stage, take the wheel, put a little water on there, clean your wire, the wheel going slow, we pull that through, and then we leave it on the back, take our tool, pop it off with our donut system that we have to set the back, and that's a plate.